Hello my lovelies, my name is Eric Adish, welcome to my YouTube and to episode 2 of Card Captor Cavalcade. Uh, in this episode I want to discuss my servant card, The Lock, and the first card that I quested for, which was The Light. Uh, so when I did the Awakening Ritual from Rune Emerson's Cloud Grimoire, links in the description, um, I was sort of struck by the imagery of these two cards because they reminded me so much of the goddess Hecate. Um, so Hecate, of course, is the goddess of witches, um, often depicted with a solar crown, this like halo, um, and carrying a key. Uh, she was also the matron of my very first coven that I was part of. Um, so for me, if nothing else, like this first impression of these two cards felt like this really wonderful like con confirmation and blessing that this was like the right direction to be traveling in. Rune says that the Servant card reveals something about the Sorcerer and I think the lock really does say some stuff like about my need for security and control and like privacy. Um, the Light though was the card that I was off to be questing for so as Rune advises I allowed the next day for the card to sort of reveal itself to me and see what the quest might be. At first I didn't really see anything happening and I was just like, oh. Um, <laughs> but then I started having this weird string of inconveniences. Um, I broke a project that I was working on, I double booked with about four people, um, and my schedule was just a mess and everything was just crazy. Um, in the end everything worked out but at the, at the time it was like everything was falling apart while I was clinging to some sense of control in my own life. The next morning, I realized at like the very last minute that I had a lesson with the magic school I'm studying in, uh, which is the Trickster Gate School of Shape Shifting, if you're curious, uh, where I was taken on a journey to connect with uh, my familiar, a familiar, um, and I was communicating with my solo guardian. And I spoke to them in this vision and we sort of explored what the light could mean. Um, like it's. It's such a broad, like, theme, um, and it's so prevalent in a ton of different forms of magic that I practice, like, thinking about my Crest of Light in sort of a Digimon paradigm, talking about me being a light player in Homestuck, um, Rune's Axiom, Light Shapes the Dark, I was thinking about Alkindi's Stella Rays, um, but my Guardian was just like, nah, I don't think that's it. <laughs> Um, I, I think I was sort of thinking too lofty, too grandiose, um, because that was when I sort of like thought of the thing Rune says in his book, where he says, it's our own nature that tests us as soon as we hold the light and bid it. Um, that need for control and the security that comes with that, I think are probably really common hurdles for magicians. Uh, because we're, t we're kind of like used to getting whatever we want as soon as we think of it, you know, in fact we want it yesterday. Uh, but by causing this chaos, the light was saying kind of, sure, it's easy to wield the light to create change, um, but are you so stubborn that you won't actually allow the change to come to fruition? And if you can't handle a change in your schedule, a change of plans, how are you going to handle the changes in your life, in your world, that working this sorcery will create? Um, if nothing else, this sort of, more than a quest, it more felt like a question. Um, like, do you consent to what is about to happen because it's going to get crazy? <laughs> My guardian was pretty confident that I'd figured it out at this point. Um, and we wrapped up at Trickster Gate and I'd headed off to the other side of town, um, picked up some friends, and we went to a theatre to see a production of the musical Next to Normal, which is one of my all-time favourites. Um, so the show already has this like big theme of light that carries through, uh, but it was the, the last song, the final number, that I really sort of felt the presence of the card. Um, which is ironic, right, since like in Cardcaptor Sakura, um, Sakura also encountered the light in a theatre, uh, so that was interesting. But the opening lines of the final song, 
the characters are on this like darkened stage and one of them says we need sunlight first of all we need sunlight and as the song continues we see the whole stage illuminated with bright spotlights um, it was almost like the card had appeared corporeal uh, with this like stunning display just for me. Uh, so that night, I went before the light in my magic circle. I used my moon blocks to confirm that I had identified its test. Um, I, you know, tried to let go and accept whatever was going to come to me and sealed it back into the card. So that's the story of my capturing the light, but be sure to subscribe uh, for my adventures with the wood card in the next episode of Card Captor Cavalcade. <laughs> uh, so yeah, until then, I will speak to you soon. Mwah. Bye.